Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at installment liquidation in a partnership. This topic is covered in advanced accounting as well as the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have over 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, and tax lectures. Please, if you like my lectures, like them, share them, put them in playlist. If you're listening to my YouTube, it means others might benefit as well if you're benefiting so please share the wealth this is my instagram account please follow me on instagram as i'm trying to increase my followers this is my facebook account and this is my website on my website if you would like to you can donate by supporting the channel also on my website i do have offers and right now becker cpa review the gold standard and cpa preparation is offering one thousand dollar off of all four parts of the becker bundle with unlimited access usually becker don't offer unlimited access now they have this limited offer if i was in your shoes and i'm studying for the exam or planning to study for the exam i would purchase this i would purchase this package also if you are a college student becker offer over two thousand plus multiple choice questions as well exercises and problems that would help you supplement your college studies so let's talk about installment liquidation in the prior session we looked at what's called simple liquidation and if you don't know what the prior channel uh, prior lecture is this is the simple liquidation i explained it then we worked an example so in case you're wondering what a simple liquidation is just go back and view the simple liquidation but what is a simple liquidation simple liquidation is when you sell all your assets all at once you sell all your asset all at once well for one thing that's not realistic when a liquidation occurs, it doesn't happen all at once and if it does happen all at once what's going to happen is it's going to be a fire sale and what is a fire sale and a fire sale you're going to be forced to sell your asset at low prices because you want to sell them all and you want to sell them fast all at once so that's what's wrong with a simple liquidation nothing not wrong is not the uh, correct word but that's the disadvantage for the partnership and oftentimes it's not it's not realistic sometimes you cannot sell it all at once and if you want to sell it all at once what well, guess what's going to happen you're going to have to lower your prices so it does hurt the partnership when you have in reality a simple liquidation simple liquidation so what's going to happen is we're going to we're going to look at a more advantageous and more realistic plan for the partners and that's where the installment method comes into place that's when the installment method gets into place we're going to sell the asset rather than all at once we're going to sell it over time and we call we can all agree that this is what usually happen in the real world you sell your asset periodically when you are liquidating now you might sell it a little bit faster than the nor faster than normal but you're not going to sell it all at once so you're going to sell it in pieces okay and but here's what's going to happen when you sell your assets in pieces bit, bit by bit guess what the partners are going to be knocking on the door of the treasurer or of, of the uh, person in charge of the cash and ask asking them for payment so that's going to create a problem for us problem in a sense how are we going to allocate how are we going to distribute those profits so special care must be taken this way we don't end up giving partner some money then ending up asking that partner back from that money so we're going to go through that liquidation plan to make sure we take precautions we take we make sure we take precautions so the best way to illustrate this is working an example but before work an example we have to look at the assumptions that we have to make this is the most conservative approach so the safe payment approach we're going to be using the safe payment approach it's the most conservative approach and it makes three assumptions so listen to me carefully one loan from partners are added to their capital simply put if the partners uh, uh lend money to the partnership we say guess what we owe you this money and it's going to be paid part of your capital so we add the loan to their capital balance that's the first assumption any remaining non-cash asset are sold at zero again this is an assumption hopefully we all know what an assumption is we say we assume that we're going to sell everything else at zero it means everything else is a loss okay in other words we assume worst case scenario to determine the effect on the partner's capital balances okay this is an assumption it's not going to happen but it's an assumption three we assume that partners are insolvent what does it mean partner are insolvent it means they cannot come up with any money to remember we, we talked in the prior session if you have a deficit you can come up with some money to cover your balance we assume here there is no they are insolvent and remember assumptions we don't record the assumptions there is no journal entries for the assumptions then what we do once we have enough cash we pay the creditors 
and at every sale of assets, the safe uh, at, after every sale of assets, the safe payment uh, of the available cash is determined. So we prepare a schedule after every sale because we're going to sell in in uh, in pieces in, in in installment. Installment means in pieces. The best way to illustrate this concept is to look at an example. We have this partnership here. They have 10,000 in cash, 40 in receivable, 30,000 in inventory, 60,000 in equipment. So this is the non-cash assets. They have liabilities of 18,000. And here's the capital balances, B, D, and O, 45,000, 27, and 50. They're all, they, they have uh, surplus. It's not deficit. The partner shares income to 40, 40, and 20, 40%, 40%, and 20%. Assume that 70% of the receivable are collected. So of the receivable, we collected 70%. So 40,000 times 70% is 28,000. So we collected 28,000 in cash. And that inventory with the book value of 15 is sold for 10. And we, we sold the uh, inventory for $10,000. That's the cash that we received, but it has a book value of 15. On this inventory, we have a loss of 5,000. All in all, we collected cash 28. We collected cash 28 plus 10. We have cash available now 38,000. Okay, all cash available at this time is distributed. So let's take a look and see how are we gonna distribute this cash. Okay, first we're gonna start with the beginning balances, 10,000 in cash, 130 in non-cash assets, 18,000 in liabilities, 45,000 their balances for Brink, 27 for Davis, and 50,000 for Olson. And again, they all have surplus. This is the beginning balances. Now we made the sale, uh, we collected some cash and we made a sale. So we collected cash of 40, 38,000, and we reduce our non-cash asset, we reduce the receivable by 28, and the inventory by 15. So we reduce our non-cash assets by 43,000. We reduce our non-cash assets by 43,000. Now what we did, we incurred a loss. On the inventory, remember in the, what I showed you here, we have a $5,000 loss on the sale of the inventory. Now what we do, we distribute the loss. We have $5,000, 40%. 40% go to B, 5,000 times 40%. 40% goes to Davis, and 20% goes to Olson. So we distributed the loss. Now we compute the new balances. Now we have cash of 48,000. And let me show you the journal entry. Uh, just I will show you the journal entry for this. So we debited cash. We debit cash 38,000. Credit non-cash assets 43,000 then we have a loss of five five thousand then we allocate the loss we debit bring account bring capital we debit bring capital 2000 we debit Davis capital 2000 I always like to work the uh, the uh, the journal entries and Olson we debited their balance 10 and we credited the loss 5000 we credited the loss 5,000. So this is the journal entry that we made, okay? Hopefully I would remember to make all the journal entries for you. The next thing we're gonna do, since we have the money and we have enough money to pay the creditors, because before we did not have, we only have 10,000 and we have 18,000 of liabilities. Now we can pay the creditors. So we're gonna pay the liability. We're gonna reduce our cash. So we're gonna debit liabilities by 18, credit cash, by 18,000 okay now cash that we still have now at hand 30,000 we still have 87 of non-cash assets and these are the uh, balances for the partners now the question becomes now you you are supposed to distribute this thirty thousand dollar to the partners but the question becomes which partner are you gonna give the money to they all have credit balances this has 43 this has 49 this Davis has 25 so the question is who do you give it to do you give it to the, uh, the to the largest to the largest balance, which is who? Olson. Do you give it to the lowest, Davis? Do you give it to Brink? Who do you give these? Uh, uh, who do you give the cash to? Well, now we're going to have to prepare what's called worst case scenario. What's the worst case scenario? We're going to find out who's going to be 
standing and uh, which partner is going to be standing in a worst case scenario okay what does that mean it means here's the capital balances before we make this assumption remember we still have 80 87 thousand worth of non-cash assets what are we going to assume assume this is worth zero we're going to assume we can't sell this so when we sell it we get nothing we're going to get zero therefore we have 87 of losses well if we have 87 of losses let's allocate the losses 87 times 40 percent 34,800 goes to to Brink. The same amount goes to Davis because they have 40% rate, and 48, 87,000 times 20% goes to Olson. So what we did is we allocate the losses to the three partners. Then we compute their capital balances. Notice what happened. Davis is wiped out. Davis now they have a deficit deficit balance. So in a worst case scenario, Davis will not exist. Okay. Then what will have what who who left in a worst case scenario? B left because B still have eight thousand two hundred of a credit balance, and Olson will have thirty one thousand six hundred. What does that mean? It means when you distribute the cash, first you distribute the cash, the available cash to B and O to Brink and Olson. If you really think about it, let me tell you why Davis will not get any money. And hopefully you can see this even before you do the computation. Davis has the lowest credit balance. Okay the lowest credit balance and has a high absorption rate of losses or profit so when we have losses he's gonna take 40 percent of the losses and relative to Olson Olson on the other hand Olson has a low percentage okay and I I'm gonna tell you Olson's gonna survive survive Davis and survive break Olson will always survive them because his participation in the profit and the loss is low and his capital is high Okay, really to wipe Walson out, to wipe, let me just tell you, just kind of give you um, a number, to wipe Olson out, 49,000 divided by 0.2, the partnership will have to incur $245,000 in losses, and he and Olson would absorb 20% of this. And the, 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 the partnership doesn't even have 245,000 in non-cash asset. So notice, Olson would survive them all, okay? So, just I just wanna, I want you to see this, so you'll see the big picture. Now, what do we do with this deficit, 9,800? Well, what's gonna happen? They're gonna have to absorb the deficit. They're gonna have to absorb the deficit. What does that mean? It means of the deficit, 9,800 goes to Brink, and 40% uh, of it, of the 9,800, and 20% of it goes to, goes to Olson, 3,260. After that, Brink will have a balance of 1667, Olson will have a balance of 28,333. Therefore, those two together, if we add those two together, those equal to 30,000. And this is how we allocate the 30,000. Because Olson's going to survive. We're always going to have to give Olson their money first. Okay? So, of the 30,000, 28,333 goes to Olson, and 1667 goes to Brink. Now, what, what we're left with is non-cash non assets of 87, uh, B has a credit balance of 41,333. Davis has a balance of 25, and Olson has a balance of 20,667. Simply put, Davis did not get any money in this this in, after the sale because because Davis it's gonna as as we assume worst case scenario he's gonna be wiped out first. Okay, now guess what? Once we make another once we make another sale of the 87, we'll prepare another schedule again. And we'll prepare another then we do the allocation that we prepare another schedule again then we do the allocation and, and and this process repeats itself i'll work an example in the next session a more like maybe two three schedules additional losses discovery of liabilities and liquidation of expenses sometime what could happen as you are making the payment it's possible since some additional liabilities will be discovered during the course of the liquidation we find out now that we're responsible for more payments usually there are the, there are liquidation expenses which may not be paid at the time of the safe payment also we might have to make payments because as we are liquidating we're going to have additional expenses maybe lawyers accountant consultant help us go through the liquidation under those circumstances we have to create an allowance simply put we have to kind of create a, a, a debt a contingent liability for those payment if there's anything discovered any expenses so just basically we have to put some cash aside a balance of cash will be retained to be used for these expenditure if you have any questions, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating and supporting the channel. If you are studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. I highly doubt it that they go this much 
in depth on the exam, but you never know. In the next session, I will work an example, a more comprehensive example using this method. Good luck, study hard, and see you on the other side of success. Thank you.